In this video, we're going to look at evaluating a limit algebraically. The first step in a process like this is to always make sure that we have evaluated our function at our given c value, which in this case is negative 29 over 10. So what we're going to do first is plug in negative 29 over 10 in for x for our function that we have given over here. Okay, so let's come over here and do that first. So here we're going to have 1 over negative 29 over 10 plus 3 minus 10 and all this is going to be over negative 29 over 10 plus 29 over 10. So we can see kind of easily that this bottom part, this denominator of this fraction is going to be 0. Let's see what our numerator works out to be. So in this first fraction that we have here, this kind of this complex looking thing right here, let's take care of getting this denominator to be just one fraction. So here, we're still going to have 1 over something. But to add these two together, we need to get a common denominator, which in this case is going to be 10. So we're going to end up multiplying that 3 by 10 to give us a denominator of 10. I'll come over here and add in that work a little bit. It's going to look kind of jumbled and messy in there, but you get the idea of what we did there. We found our least common denominator to be 10. Okay, and at the end of this, we still have this minus 10. So let's do this addition down here, simplify this a little bit more and see what happens. So we get negative 29 plus 30 is just 1. So we have 1 over 1 over 10, minus 10 over 0. So now what we're going to do is this 1 in the numerator right here, we're going to erase that and rewrite that as 1 over 1 to signify to ourselves that we have a fraction over a fraction. The reason we do that is we're going to combine these into one fraction, namely by multiplying by the reciprocal of the bottom. Keep, flip, multiply, a lot of names to this kind of trick right here. So we're going to do this, and now we're going to do the multiplication over here and simplify this down a bit. So now we have 10 times 1, which is just 10, and then 1 times 1 on the bottom here, which is going to give us 1. So we have this over 0, and what this becomes is 10 divided by 1 is just 10, so we get 10 minus 10 over 0, or 0 over 0, which is one of the most classic indeterminate forms that we can arrive to, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this kind of sanctioned off to give us a little bit more room so we have more room to work with the other stuff. But once we find an indeterminate form like this, we're going to need to go back to this original function we were given here and see if there's anything that we can do to it to go ahead and make our limit not be an indeterminate form. Normally we do things like factor if we have polynomials, multiply by a conjugate if we have a radical, but in this case we don't have either of those things. So what I want to start by doing is tackling the numerator and the denominator separately, but by making them into one fraction. Because you see here we have 1 over x plus 3 and then minus 10. Let's see if we can bring these two things together from our numerator and see if we can make them one fraction. We'll do the same thing for the denominator of this big fraction. So we've got this. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 29 over 10. So in this fraction here we have a denominator of x plus 3 and a denominator of 1 right here. So we're going to put both of these parts underneath a denominator of x plus 3. The first fraction already has it. What we need to do to the second one is multiply both the numerator and the denominator by x plus 3. Okay, In the same swoop, let's go ahead and look at the denominator here. So we have a denominator of 1. Barely make those show up there. We kind of understand that anything by itself is understood to be over 1. right? So we have denominator of 1, denominator of 10. So our least common denominator is going to be 10. So here we get that this is 10x over 10 plus 29 over 10. Okay, so we've done that work so far. Let's go ahead and in the same step, distribute this 10 into the polynomial up here and combine the numerator into one fraction. So here we're going to get something that looks like this. The limit as x approaches negative 29 over 10 of, so we get 1 minus 10x, but see this negative 10 is going to cause this to be a minus 30. All right, so it's kind of like multiplying negative 10 times x and negative 10 times 3, so we get this here. 
and this is all going to be over, sorry, that got kind of some stuff cut off, let me redo that. That's better. So this is all over x plus 3. And again, this is over, so let's combine these two right here into one fraction, so we get this going on. Oop. Sorry about that. And we got that. Okay, so this bottom part's combined into one fraction, but with this top fraction here, this numerator, we can simplify this down in one more step just for sake of making it easier on ourselves. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the limit as x approaches negative 29 over 10. Of 1 minus 30, it's going to give us negative 29 minus 10x over x plus 3 over 10x plus 29 over 10. Okay, so now what we're going to do is kind of similarly to what we did over here with the keep flip multiply multiply by the reciprocal has many names about it. We're going to do that with this same fraction that we have here, this big old thing. So we're going to need to take up a little bit of space here, but it's okay. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator here, and we're going to do it to both the numerator and denominator of our fraction. When we do it with the denominator, the whole point of this process is to get it to cancel out, which is exactly what it does. So what we have now is we have the limit as x approaches negative 29 over 10 of, let's go ahead and write all this out, negative 29 minus 10x over x plus 3 multiplied by 10 times 10x plus 29. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative out of this negative 29 minus 10x of each term so that I can do something else and make this fraction and this multiplication a little bit easier to deal with. Namely, what I'm going to do it's going to end up looking like this. This is still x approaches negative 29 over 10. So we're going to get negative times 29 plus 10x. All we did there was we just factored out that minus right there. This is over x plus 3 times 10 over 10x plus 29. So the reason why I did that is now we have this factor and this factor as the same in a numerator and denominator of a product of fractions, so we can cancel those out. So what we have left now is the limit as x approaches negative 29 over 10 of negative 1 over x plus 3 times 10 over 1. Or similarly, let's go ahead and write this down a little bit more. Actually do that multiplication in there. So we have negative 10 over x plus 3. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to plug our c value back in for x like we did in this first stuff up here and we found the indeterminate form and all that good stuff. But we're going to see if we can find a different answer here. So let's plug in negative 29 over 10 for x and what we've done so far. So we're going to come down here and we have so this equals negative 10 over negative 29 over 10 plus 3. So let's take care of making that denominator of this complex fraction here into one fraction. I'm going to take this over here and do that here. So we have negative 10 over, so our common denominator there is going to be 10, kind of like what we did earlier. So we're going to get negative 29. Let me make that negative a little bit more. There we go. Over 10 like this. So we get negative 10, negative 29 plus 30 is 1 over 10. So here what we're going to do now is we're going to rewrite the numerator in terms of itself over 1 because they're equivalent forms. Now we have this. And let's do one more time of multiplying by the reciprocal here. Sorry, this is getting a little bit small to read here. I'll zoom in on this part here. Okay, and let me also add in a little indicator. Let me also add in a little line that separates what we're doing. Sorry this is getting so cluttered. There we go. Okay, so now we have all this string here. So we have negative 10 over 1 times 10 over 1. And this whole thing on the bottom is going to cancel out, which is what we want to have happen when multiplying by the reciprocal. 
So we get negative 10 times 10, or negative 100. Sorry this was a bit of a cluttered mess on this problem. There was a lot of fractions to deal with and not a whole lot of workspace to deal with. But in the end, what we end up getting is that our limit is negative 100.